show the sick bays in the various series. And above the beds, they have these monitoring devices. Are you familiar with that? Mm, yeah, indeed. Right? Okay, now those are above every bed in pretty much every hospital today. Mm. And here's something that was originally shown to us in 1966 when the series made it to air on NBC Network on Tuesday nights at 7.30 where I was allowed to stay up late to watch Kirk and Spock and all my favorite characters. And that technology is now in every hospital room. Indeed. So that's another example exactly. of this technology. The original series also showed CD uh, technology, like CD-ROM discs. Yeah. They also showed in the series Deep Space Nine these little data chips that we put into our PDAs, our personal digital assistants, like our Palm Pilots. Right. And the interesting thing about that is that on the various series, we do see the flat little devices that are handheld that look like today's PDAs, and they were called PADS. And a PAD stands for Personal Access Display Device. Mm -hmm. And this is another technology that became reality because the PAD has been realized as the real-life personal digital assistant such as the Palm Pilot or the Apple Newton, for two such examples. Mm, yeah. And I have to wonder if the three initials, PDA, were used because of or in spite of Star Trek's personal access display device mm -hmm. <laughs> ad. Probably. You know, <laughs> do you think? Uh, Say yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Do you think the? I mean, do, do you know if if uh, uh, Sin uh, or Lin, sorry, uh, Harvey Lin, uh, the guy from Rand Corporation, do you know if he continued to work throughout the original series? And and do if so, do you think that he consequently was the guy mainly behind? the technological aspect to Star Trek, or do you know if there's another name behind that in regards to design and, and uh, you know, thinking about what gadgets they might have had at that, you know, in the future? In terms of the corporate structure, Harvey Lynn and the Rand Corporation were primarily responsible for all the technology that you see. Hmm. However, it did get appropriated and credit was given to the various designers and props uh, people who worked on the show. Right. And yes, Harvey Lynn did work through the entire um, series mm. for three years. Very interesting. Yeah, that should... So he made like the grand total of like 2500 bucks. <laughs> three years worth of work. Yeah, right, right. Just it makes no sense. <laughs> no, I mean, they they're, they got their, their reward. Uh, it's probably a, a symbolic, uh, you know, because of law or something, who knows, a symbolic amount of money that he got from that one, you know, just to, <laughs> because he was on the team working. But that's probably a, you know, a, a good, uh, I don't know what to call it, that they got their, they got their, um, main points out, I guess, what they wanted to through the show, through, through that guy. So, uh, mm, very interesting indeed, Kent. Another thing that I found interesting was in one of the episodes, 
which was a two-part episode called Past Tense, I believe, from Deep Space Nine. They had uh, gone back in time to San Francisco of the year 2020 into a place called the Sanctuary District. These were relocation camps where unemployed and homeless people were housed in this sort of a tent city type of thing. A very similar situation to what we see in the movie They Live and also something that was really addressed in this uh, program by FEMA and Ronald Reagan during the Reagan administration called Rex 84, Mm. which was um, an acronym that stands for Readiness Exercise 84, meaning the year 1984. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And What they were talking about were were relocation camps, which are designed to get people into the inner cities, into these sanctuary district type places, so that they could better control the population Mm. in the event of a complete economic collapse. That's interesting. And Rex, of course, is uh, that's that's King. In uh, I think it's Latin, yeah. isn't it? You know, King eighty yeah. four. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, exactly. Very interesting. Well, there's a, a few levels to that too. Hmm. In terms of how they make us uh, think subconsciously. Hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Or the collective un- subconscious unconscious right right they're feeding into that one i guess we also could um, uh, could could mention at this point kent as we as we uh, we can begin to round things uh off here uh, that this is a, a, a subject of, of star trek that you'll be um addressing in your uh, upcoming book isn't that right yes i wanted to to talk about this today to give people a little taste of something that I'm discussing in my book, and I wanted to do that just because so many people have been writing me, calling me on the phone, and asking me, what are you doing? What's your project going to be about? And I've been very tight-lipped about it, because I, A, don't want anyone to steal the idea, and B, it's just not fully time to talk about it yet. Right, right. But uh, this is a little uh, peek peek into what uh, it's going to be about then, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like a little coming attraction, ah, if you will. Very good, very good, yeah. Um, Kent, tell people about your website and about your uh, podcast before we round things up here for today. Sure. My website, my research journalism website is called the Controversy Papers, and there are 515 different news, special reports, and other types of articles such as book and DVD reviews that are on that website. It's available at controversypapers.net, and that's K-E-N-T-R-O. B-E-R-S-Y papers.net I also have a podcast that I've been doing since the end of May 2007 and that's called The Controversy Tapes. Um, That's of episodes come out every Monday afternoon and they are available at both the Controversy Tapes website, which is available at controversytapes.net, and also on the iTunes Music Store. They're available as a free download. 
Very good. So the main website again is controversypapers.net. Do take a look. And uh, thank you for uh, being here with us today, Kent, and spending some some time with us, uh, sharing some interesting material uh, regarding Star Trek that will be upcoming in your in your future book. So thank you very much, Kent. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Does my heart feel so bad? Why does my soul feel so bad? Why does my heart? So oh.